Maybe I can help you. I am Boba Fett. My memories of Boba Fett are, are terrific. I mean, first of all, you put on that outfit, you put on the helmet, and you become quite a, a badass. When I walked onto the set for the very first time um, in the costume, and George Lucas looked at the costume and sort of looked down and said, mm-hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. okay, well, welcome aboard. It's not a big role, but I'm sure you'll have fun. I remember going home and going to my boys, yes, I'm doing this yet, yes, yes, yes. And they said, Dad, we've got homework to do. You know, we'll talk later. Yeah. The worst thing I could do was bend down and then put on the knee pads, which had little darts that fire at, you know, dangerous, you know, another weaponry from Boba Fett. But I remember the Velcro that was round the corner, and I thought, right, now I need to walk over there and make sure I'm okay. And as I put my foot down, the pressure released the elastic, and it flew across the room. And I thought, oh, no. God, they said, sorry, I'm sorry, sorry, everybody, I'll just pick this up. They're going to say, thank you, Jeremy, it's been great fun, but we're going to have to use somebody else. That was the, the fear that I had, but luckily I stayed up. The first day, um, I went into the, got dressed in the outfit and did lots of tugging, this works, that works, and then just out of the blue, someone came in, I can't remember who it was, and said, this is you, Jeremy. And the, on the card, there was the small Boba Fett, the, the, the toy. And that's the first toy that I ever saw of Boba Fett. Now, of course, they're coming out from this size, that size, this size. Oh, I, I know why they've got them. The shot will be like this panoramic review of Boba Fett looking like this, and they can make it look as if it's... I mean, my technical ability in filming isn't very good, so they said, no, that's, that's how it is. That's what they made, a, a new, small Boba Fett. And that's yours. It's a, toy, present. I said, what, for me? Oh, thank you. Well, that was the first Boba Fett toy I've got, and I have just one or two, well, maybe three or four, maybe a few more. There's one on a towel. The, you, you can put it by the bath, and you can tread on Boba Fett without any harm to anybody at all. I'm not normally a, a nervous person at all, but uh, and behind the mask, no one can see who it is. But still, I had that nerve about, oh, I'm going to shake, help, oh dear, what, what, do, what do I say? And I suddenly thought, well, I'm under the helmet. No one will know what I'm saying. I can say what I like, you know, Timbuktu. And it was so exciting, and standing with the other bounty hunters, and Darth Vader is going, no disintegrations, as you wish. Boba Fett just nods like that. You know, that wasn't me, that was suggested by I think Irvin Kirshner, who just sort of, that slight nod of approval. I was chatting to someone, I said, this reminds me of Clint Eastwood. Piss full of dollars. It took Clint Eastwood, it seemed to be months, just smoking a cigarette as the most, uh, very unhealthy, so don't do this. But he was doing this. And it was that slow, but it was exciting. With Irving Kirshner, he would run through a scene and say, um, yeah, I want you here. And there was a lot of sort of direction, but in a way, I think Irving Kirshner knew that the, the scene plays itself. You know, you've got all these wonderful costumes, you can look at the different bounty hunters. And I remember that first day that I, I look as though with the script, or the small amount of script I had, that Boba Fett is the best of the lot, or the most dangerous. So the more subtle stuff you do is quite fun. I remember um, being called, you know, Jeremy, uh, straight after lunch, we need to do some shots of Boba Fett inside Slave One. And I said, oh, Slave One? I, I wasn't quite sure what he meant by Slave One. But then soon I, I got the information that Slave One is Boba Fett's spaceship, which is the fastest in the world. Well, that's what they told me. But I sat, I spent virtually three quarters of a day just sitting in Slave One going mm -hmm. when he pulls down the viewfinder that's exciting and someone told me I don't know whether this is true they said when you pull down your visor and the radar thing you lock on to 30 different spaceships 
That's what I was told. Now, whether it's true or not, I don't know, but I like to believe I can track onto 30 aircraft. The dining room scene is Boba Fett, and I remember standing behind Darth Vader and then just moving out and then bringing up the gun. That was the first, first I think you see of Boba Fett, the menacing, the menacing Fett. Yeah, that sounds quite nice, the menacing Fett. But that was another, there was lots of little movements where Boba Fett just steps behind Darth Vader and sees Chewbacca, the different characters. So that was quite early on, but you know, I, I enjoyed all the lifting up and then moving the gun and then back down again. I mean, when I look at it, the Boba Fett, he only has to stand still for two seconds. It's more menacing than running around trying to point a gun at somebody. The first day of the carbonite freezing chamber where Han Solo goes down and disappears, and then that's the end of him. I remember it was really, really hot, and uh, all the steam, the effects of the steam coming up, and that was, and he was standing there, and I was thinking, oh, Please, I hope this isn't going to go on for forever because we were just literally dripping. Uh, and I spent, I think, the whole day or more than a whole day just standing in the background as Boba Fett, ready to do a few. And there's a few of those again before we were rehearsed it. I can remember that I was climbing up, and all I was going to do is just stand near Darth Vader because this was my bounty, the jab of the heart. And and I can remember just standing like that and moving and then trod on Dave Prowse's foot and part of his cloak and he went crashing down to the floor while I'm sort of half pulling him to, together. And then other people were falling over. That was just, we were just rehearsing the scene where Luke Skywalker was probably well aware that I was around. Yeah. Establishing Boba Fett in his way, he, he'll get his bounty and he'll, he'll be quick. So I did lots of sort of, and then going, oh, crikey. Um, um, come on, Jeremy, come on, let's get going, please. Thank you very much. And this was the time where I had two different parts, Lieutenant Shekel and Boba Fett. I was asked, quick, quick, Jeremy, get changed, get changed. We need you for this uh, other scene. What, what scene, uh, why, why do I need to get changed? No, just, just get changed, please. So I went off, got changed into a, into a, a different outfit. I said, oh, is this Boba Fett's outfit? No, no, it's a, it's a lieutenant, it's a lieutenant, I don't know. They hadn't got the name, but I ended up playing another part where I dragged Carrie Fisher behind the elevator. And not a very nice person, I was quite nasty there as the young lieutenant. Uh, when they were doing the piece where Han Solo is going up, and we were, it was on a board, which is obviously blue screen, and sort of wiped out and had the wires. And I remember sort of walking sideways like a crab. It actually looked quite good in the end, just sliding one way like that. And he's got his prey, he's got Han Solo. What happens next? Well, we know what happens next, so. That, that was fun because there was lots of, it wasn't long sequences, there were just nice little bits and pieces. Boba Fett is getting away, he's gonna get away further and further with Han Solo to deliver to Jabba the Hutt. From Empire Strikes Back, to Return of the Jedi. I'm surprised how, how I did notice, but I, the costume had changed, slight change color. Whether the Mandalorians have some sort of thing that he, they go up a level and they put on, they've now finally passed all their tests and there's sort of a maroon brown clip on where he's got the, the rockets. And I sort of, I, I, didn't, I didn't even notice until much later on that it's a different... I thought that maybe have, they might have lost it. They might have lost the costume. And so they... Well, there's another one. It's slightly different colour. We'll use that. In Jabba's palace, and standing to the left of Jabba, who's... Oh, 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 Chewbacca. That's not a bad uh, interpretation, is it? No, no probably not. So I've stood all day literally in one position to the left of Jabba the Hutt. And then Carrie Fisher comes in and obviously Boba Fett recognizes that this is, uh, this is Carrie Fisher. And here's the bomb, is it going to explode? And there was a nod of approval between Boba Fett and Princess Leia. Every day I used to say, I've got the theater tonight, which I've got to be there by six, 
Lucasfilm were terrific because they allowed me to go and do the play. I had to be at the theatre by six o'clock, do the play, back in the morning at five o'clock and ready for a, a day's filming. And the lovely thing is, no makeup, nothing. Helmet on and I'm ready. That's how quick it was. People say, especially the younger kids say, he's so cool. Oh, wow. Yeah. Or they come up to you and say, you're so cool. Well, my boys, who are now fully grown, don't say, gosh, you're cool, Dad. You know, it's really fantastic, you know. But he is, he's cool. And, and you begin to recognize that the character is, is cool, but he's dangerous. And the more, he's not creepy, but there is that sort of slight movement of him. He'll just do a very slow turn. And he'll take that time, but, but that's menacing. And he stands still. I like, I mean, I used to muck about very briefly at the end of filming and just practice a few. You know, it's good to be Boba, or Boba Fett, if you're being nice to him. I think I've been terribly lucky, not only working fairly consistently over the last 50 years, but also being, you know, part of Star Wars, because to me, Star Wars will never go away. It's there forever. You know, we're all part of it, we've been in it, we've done some parts, different parts different people, different actors, but to have played Boba Fett, uh, I'm very proud of it. Uh, I've had a terrific time and uh, long may it go on.